Roger Stone is going to be joining us here in just a few minutes to talk about CNN, MSNBC, you name it, engaging in disinformation. In fact, there's a clip up on Infowars.com in the article Mr. Stone wrote for Infowars. CNN edits a video to imply, quote, I call for violence in Cleveland in March. And then CNN kind of did a hit piece last night implying that, well, we're ominous, but, but, but falling short of saying we're calling for violence and saying, hey, the Republicans just have rules. If they want to ignore your popular vote, that's okay. That's no big deal. So things are really escalating in the mainstream media who just wants us all to sit there like it's normal and have them ignore what's happening and let Ted Cruz take the delegates in Arizona, in Louisiana, in Texas, all over the country. And every day they announce new places they're taking delegates that were representing voters for Donald Trump. And they're doing it to Bernie Sanders as well. But Trump is clearly in the lead and they're doing this. And now they're trying to imply we're bad. See, that's a chilling effect. Well, everybody knows that constitutionalists and libertarians and Trump supporters are some of the most nice, well-mannered people. And that fraud's not going to work. Just like they've been claiming Trump's calling for violence when he's not. Somebody's punching people. Trump says, yeah, good, punch him back. Take him out of here. That's normal. But see, self-defense in this politically correct world is a fraud. They tell your kids if they get attacked, don't defend yourself. So let's go to the CNN clip, and then we're going to go to Roger Stone. Here's CNN uh, last night. We will have demonstrations at specific hotels where there are delegates so we can let them visually see the will of the people. We will have a daily protest. We will man the ramparts every day. And hey, it's a free country. If we're staying in the hotel, we can go knock on their hotel room door, like you said, right? Well, and I have friends in every delegation, so I will be able to tell you which state delegations are involved in the big steal, which party leaders are ringleaders in the big steal. We do not advocate violence. We're not talking about roughing anybody up. We're what we talking are to people. talking about is being a presence to let people feel the pressure of the American people and those who have bothered to vote in these primaries and caucuses. Yeah, we're the victims that they're openly robbing as we speak. That sounds slightly ominous. I mean, is that the way you want the delegates counted? Look, I mean, he said he doesn't want violence. No one wants violence. There's no place for that. He said that explicitly. I think he's just trying to say, I want this to be transparent, and I think that's fair. That's we at least owe that to the people. When you have the most of the American people going to vote for Donald Trump, we at least owe transparency. But what to about what, what Katie said? The rules are the rules, and like these rules have been in place for a while now. And this is just how it's done. Sure, but can we step back and question? The rules? Because you have a majority of Republican voters in the Monmouth poll saying they don't like the rules. They are the ones who should be determining the rules. It's the but American. Do you change people. it in the middle of a presidential race, or do you change it when there's not a presidential race going on? You talk about it. You talk about it. You don't just yeah. say the rules are the rules. Some of these rules actually it. can be changed very close to the actual convention. And I would just point out that uh, Alex Jones, aside, who's really a conspiracy <laughs> theorist, I think putting him on the right is, oh, yeah. is, is rough for those of us who are conservatives. Uh, but nonetheless, the, the rules that are in place are going to mean that either Trump or Cruz will be the nominee. I think because. Apart from the rules, and this is what everyone's getting towards now, uh, if you don't give one of those candidates the GOP nomination, there will be a nuclear meltdown within the entire conservative movement, within the entire right wing. Everyone is going to completely freak out. So all this talk that you're hearing about how it could be Paul Ryan or you know people saying the, the sort of white knight that they're going to bring in to save everyone, that's the worst possible idea. That's yeah. the worst imaginable. There's no way you pull together the party to unite behind a candidate if they just hand it to somebody, Hail Caesar style. Kenny, what do you think? Well, you know, it's growing tiresome to have Trump supporters come on the air and try to explain away the incendiary threatening things that Trump uh, uh, staff and, and the Trump team are out there saying. Roger Stone is basically threatening people. There is a process in place. You have to have 1,237 delegates. As I've said before, there's no Republican Illuminati that can take the nomination from <laughs> somebody or hand it. 
to, to, to somebody. You have to get the delegates. You have to earn the delegates. Donald Trump so far hasn't even gotten 50% of the delegates. At this point in time, Mitt Romney was attracting 70% of Republican support in 2012. Donald Trump has completely flatlined. And so to suggest that, you know, the will of the people is for Donald Trump, the, the majority of Republicans aren't even backing this guy. So I think that the process needs to take place. It will occur at the convention. It will be a fair process. Nobody's stealing anything, but there will be a fair process. And I expect that Donald Trump will not get 1,237 delegates on the first ballot. All right, that's and enough. Do worse after Let's go to Roger Stone joining us via phone just for, with a brief pop uh, in. Again, his article's on Infowars.com. Roger Stone, CNN, edits video to imply I call for violence in Cleveland in March. That was the day before. Now this is a new one where they don't go that far, but they have the CIA guy, uh, Buck Sexton, get up there and say, Alex Jones isn't a conservative. Well, that's true. I'm a libertarian patriot. Uh, and then you don't tell folks you're with the CIA that doesn't even represent this country, but foreign interest in many cases. But then he tells the truth that it'll blow up if you ignore this. We're there saying we'll put political pressure under the First Amendment as citizen lobbyist to say don't steal our vote. That's totally in the Constitution. How are we bad? I tell you, Roger, you've really got them scared organizing this, so hats off to you. And again, Roger's phone was breaking up a moment. Roger, can you hear me? All right. I'm going to go ahead and go to another clip here. He, he's in a bad cell area. I want to go to the clip uh, that's in the article that he writes about where he says, uh, basically, CNN edits video to imply I call for violence in Cleveland in March. CNN used a truncated video clip of my interview with Stefan Molyneux urging people to go to the hotels of delegates implying I was advocating violence in Cleveland when the GOP kingmakers funded by the multinational corporations and the globalists who fund them try to hijack the Republican nomination from Donald Trump. Let's go to that clip. We're looking at a very, very narrow path in which the kingmakers go all out to cheat, to steal, and to, uh, and to snatch this nomination from the candidate who was overwhelmingly selected by the voters, which is why I have urged Trump supporters, come to Cleveland, march on Cleveland, join us in the Forest City. We're going to have protests, demonstrations. We will disclose the hotels and the room numbers of those delegates who are directly involved in the steal. If you're from Pennsylvania, we'll tell you who the culprits are. We urge you to visit their hotel and find them. You have a right to discuss this if you voted in the Pennsylvania primary, for example, and your votes are being disallowed. Now we have Roger Stone joining us. Hopefully three times is the charm. Uh, Roger Stone, I tell you, they are really twisting what you and I and others are saying. They're scared of us saying, hey, don't steal our vote. They're scared we might exercise our First Amendment. Yeah, I think the crowds that are talking about going to Cleveland uh, are now starting to worry the, the kingmakers and their allies in the mainstream media. In all honesty, Alex, people at CNN should be ashamed of themselves. Truncating, editing videos to give an impression that I advocated violence when I very specifically renounced violence. Happened again last night on Fox, unfortunately, Megyn Kelly interviewing Charles Hurt and Katie Plavlik, all denouncing me for advocating violence when I never advocated violence, taking my comments out of uh, a context. This is the kind of thing Joseph Goebbels did. This is propaganda. One has to wonder whether CNN is a legitimate news organization or whether it is now just a propaganda arm of the Clinton uh, uh, campaign. This is very, very disturbing, but as I wrote for InfoWars.com and on my own site, StoneColdTruth.com, um, they have twisted my words. This is very simple. If anyone will listen to the entire interview with you or the entire interview with Stefan Molyneux or the entire radio interview I did with Dom Giordano, my buddy in uh, Philadelphia, I specifically renounce violence, specifically say this is a non-violent protest. It's an attempt to discredit us because they're, they fear our numbers, Alex. They fear that hundreds of thousands of patriots will show up in Cleveland to
to demand that their Democratic votes will count. Well, I'm not calling for violence either because we haven't exhausted other avenues. But when you start having governments like the Politburo that appoint candidates like communist China or old Soviet Russia, at what point when they start going after our free speech do we not have to stand up? So they're going to steal our vote and now they're going to demonize people going there implying that we're evil or bad. And then now filmmakers... <laughs> Uh, it's in the news today, are having FEC complaints filed on them for criticizing Obama, Joel Gilbert. That's in the news today. With a straight face, the Federal Elections Commission is coming after Joel Gilbert for his film criticizing Obama. I mean, this this is over the top. Yeah, there is the, the liberals and the, and the establishment love free speech as long as it's theirs. Uh, and uh, they, uh, these folks, particularly the folks at MSNBC, they should really be ashamed of themselves. Um, this is this is Soviet-style propaganda, where you edit out certain sections to leave a false impression. So let me be clear again: I have not advocated violence. I renounce violence. This is about the numbers. The Republican bosses will think twice. There are hundreds of thousands of voters. Uh, and supporters in Cleveland uh, who are demanding that their votes in the primaries and caucuses be respected. Uh, we have a right to find the delegates who we elected, who are our representatives. We have the right to lobby them. We have the right to engage them. We have the right to have a dialogue with them. They need to see graphically, based on numbers, that the Republican Party will lose hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of new voters, of, of, of disillusioned Democrats and independents who Trump has drawn to our banner. Voters that no other Republican, country club Republican like Ted Cruz, can bring uh, to our banner. So um, this, is a, this is an important issue today. Uh, I must tell you, I am more disgusted with the uh, mainstream media than ever. Donald Trump is right. They're very, very dishonest. Well, it shows they're afraid of hundreds of thousands, hopefully millions of people showing up to be part of the electoral process to say, hey, you claim you're taking popular vote because you have some rule that you've never used before, but now you are. We're here to say we're not going along with it. And I think you ought to start a movement to have all the delegates who have their votes stolen by the party officials to march across the street to another hotel or to a parking lot in front of all the media and have them cast their votes right there and nominate Donald Trump. I mean, that's the real power of the people, and that would send the message that the real election was for Trump, but you stole it. I think we ought to do that. Well, we're going to have a full program of four days of mass protests, rallies, demonstrations, and other activities. We're days away from announcing our plans. Uh, in the meantime, we hope that everybody listening who uh, will, uh, will be able to join us uh, in July will make the trip. Cleveland is beautiful this time of year that time of year. Uh, we're going to have a, a full program of a participatory democracy um, for folks to get engaged in. The only way we can stop the big steal is with our voices. So stay uh, tuned at stopthesteal.org. We're going to be updating that with additional information shortly. In closing, Roger, it's Got to be somewhat satisfying, though. I mean, I know it is for me personally to see them this scared. They are really upset. They've got all the major White House uh, bases like Media Matters that, as you know, is openly run by the White House and, and gives orders to MSNBC and others uh, and CNN to a certain extent. They are really, really scared of this. I mean, how dare the American people even think about standing up for their vote? How un-American. In fact, they may announce that voting never even existed, Roger. Well, I was attacked on MSNBC, CNN, and Fox last night. Let me tell you something, Alex. The only thing worse than being talked about is not being talked about. That's right. Roger Stone, we'll talk to you again with your update next week. Thank you for all your time. Godspeed. Many thanks. Wow. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen.